Hey guys, welcome to Windshine Audio. I thought of taking this video to answer most of the some of the frequently asked questions that we received over the past one month ever since we released the Aries 12 as well as reintroducing the Aries 2 as annual DAC. We thought a video like this is better way to communicate to you to tell you what are the differences between the DAC I think or rather we think it works better than emailing you or rather in text form uh, somehow video is working better these days where it is more entertaining but sadly I'm not a youtuber I can never be one all my videos are uncut unedited or not edited I'm not a video guy and to some extent some of my video you might find boring um, I can't speak as well as some of the YouTubers online I'm a Chinese educator uh, person in Singapore but uh, I can speak a little bit of English but I cannot speak as well as some of the YouTubers but I try to improve myself as I, I learn daily Okay, first thing the annual DAC versus the average 2 DAC Let's be clear, they are identical. Enyo is a rename of the very popular Aries 2 DAC. The front, the back, the internal are identical, except that Enyo comes with this Enyo laser edge at the right bottom corner, whereas the Aries 2 comes with this logo at the top left corner. Inside out are the same, connectivity wise are the same, push button, front panel control are identical. There are no difference between the two units. So we get asked quite a few times um, what is Enyo, what is Aries 2, what happened to Aries 2. So Dinafrips decided to rename the Aries 2 to make way for Aries 12 so that not to confuse with the same name Aries for both different units. So yes. Aries 2 and Yo are the same, except that the name is different. And Enyo and Aries 12, there are some differences. So that's the thing that I want to talk about next. Right. So just to summarize, Aries 2 and Enyo are the same. Okay. And the price remain the same as well. Okay, let me put the stack aside and compare the Enyo and Aries 12. Okay, this is the Enyo. And I'll just leave the Aries 2 on the floor. Okay. So we introduced the Aries 12 sometime in November, mid of November, when I was just recovered from COVID. So the video is kind of funny where in the midway of introducing the two unit to you, I started coughing and have, have this persistent coughing once in a while in the video. I do apologize for that. But thankfully, I'm fully recovered, so you don't hear me coughing in the middle of the video for the past couple of videos that I've taken. Uh, that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, Angel and Aries 12. It looks a little bit different, where the front panel of the Aries 12 has the button rearranged. And you also spotted a push button for switching the OS and NOS mode. So this is the, one of the features that we get asked quite a few times um, that the customer wanted to have a push button and an indication where they can tell whether the deck is in NOS or OS mode. So it is incorporated in the Aries 12. Aries 12 also spotted with I2S input at the back. So comparing the Enyo and Aries 12, you notice Enyo has two coaxial input, two optical input. Whereas for the Aries 12, it is missing one coaxial and one optical input because the Nafrips needed the, the space within the Aries 12 to accommodate the i squares input. Aha, you notice there are some golden color screw at the back of this unit. This is not the standard version. This is my own unit where I changed the screw from the black color one to a nicer color or golden color screw. This is actually a copper screw. Uh, this is purely for aesthetic. This doesn't change the sound quality by any means. 
So this is just to let me know that this unit belongs to me uh, because we have several at least 12 in the office here. So this new unit here uh, is my own unit where I use it in my desk quite often. So again, I have to stress that this golden color copper screw is not it's not some modification that will improve the sound quality. It's purely aesthetic. If you want to change the screw of your Aries 2 NO or the Aries 12 to some other nicer color screw, by all means, you can do that. Okay, so Aries 12 comes with this I2S input where you may use transport or DDC that comes with I2S output with the Aries 12. So Aries 12 has this I2S pinout configuration as well. It allows you to have eight I2S pinout modes that you can change to match the I2S pinout with the source. So put this unit aside and I want to talk about pairing the Aries 12 with the Iris DDC. So we have been selling this um, combo quite well for the past one month, the Aries 12 hit the market just about four weeks ago. So customer always buy this as a combo. But also notice there are some comment in the forum says that I'm not going to buy the Aries 12 because you will need a DDC to go with it to sound good. Uh, that's kind of upsetting to read the comment like that. Dina Flips introduced the DDC is to address some of the problem that the deck cannot resolve within itself. If you use a consumer grade computer with a USB output to the DAC, it is undeniable that Dina Flips DDC does a pretty good job to remove the noise and output cleanse and good quality digital signal to the DAC. But that doesn't mean that Dina Flips DAC built-in USB input is inferior. In fact, in my opinion, it is a very high quality one. You do not need a DDC to go with the DAC for good sound quality, let's put it this way. But by adding the DDC does improve the sound quality. That investment, whether necessary or not, really depends on your system. I always tell the customer that it really depends on how attentive you listen to the music and how revealing your system is. And I will not recommend the customer to buy the combo right away. And if you if you communicated with me in the past, you will know that I always recommend the customer to go for the DAC first, use it for a while in the system. As you get accustomed to the sound quality of the DAC, you may consider upgrading the computer to a streamer or if you are pretty much used to the computer interface where you want to use the computer for some other reason but you want to improve the USB output quality you may consider the Dynaflips DDC after a couple of months of using the DAC uh, that is because I want you to introduce the component one by one to the system to appreciate the sound quality improvement instead of buying the combo at once uh, this is how I enjoy this audio hobby. So I change things or up, I upgrade things one by one so that I can tell what are the differences as I introduce each component. So again, I have to stress that Dina Flips comes out with DDC not because of the USB quality or the input quality of the DAC is inferior. It is because we want to address some of the problem that the DAC cannot resolve by itself. The real aesthetic of the DAC cannot accommodate what is inside a DDC. In a DDC, there are some isolator, the digital governing isolation uh, components that take out quite a few chunk of um, real estate, the PCB um, section, where it cannot be accommodated in the D DAC. The DDC also does some other thing where it comes with better quality crystal oscillator like the TCXO and OCXO. So these are the bigger components that cannot be accommodated into the DAC. So we introduced this DDC for that very reason. It's again, not because the DAC is not good by its own. You have to go with the DDC. No, this is not how we, how we project or how we, uh, how we sell these components. It has never been in our mind to, to say that 
Oh, you have to buy the DC, DVC. No, never. In fact, if you watch my couple of videos uh, before that, when I introduced the Lumin U2 Mini uh, streamer with DM Flips DAC, I did say that with a high quality streamer, you may not need a DDC. Okay, I think I have speak enough about this uh, DAC and DDC, and as well as the differences between the Aries 12 Enyo and Aries 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.